We all know a thing or two about genetics. This long string of bases makes up all of the instructions needed to make each and every one of us, and each and every living thing, and even almost living things, like viruses. However, genetics is not the end of that story. The 26th of June 2000 was when the Human Genome Project wrapped up. Finally, a full human genome had been sequenced. However, in the decade or so since then, a bunch of questions have come up that can't just be answered by genetics. There's another layer to it all. And this new area of science is called epigenetics. An enzyme called helicase unwinds the original DNA's double helix, creating a replication fork. The concept is actually relatively simple. We can think of DNA fixed and long as it is like a script. Then epigenetics would be effectively the director. It decides what to turn up, what to turn down. Its job is to decide how to express things, which is key because every single one of our body's main cells has the exact same DNA in all of it, all of it. The stuff to make eyeballs, the stuff to make muscles, the stuff to make your liver. That's all in, you know, your skin cells as well. So how does it know what to turn off and what to turn on? That is epigenetics. So, DNA, it's got trillions of bases in it, it's ridiculously long. In fact, if you just got, you know, one strand of your full DNA, it'd be about two meters long, that's its actual size. So to fit a full one of that inside every single one of your cells, we've got to wrap it up. And histones are these sites where the DNA really sort of coils itself around. And it's at these points when these things called methyl and acetyl groups can attach onto DNA and turn things up or down or mute them all together, a bit like a volume dial. So it's more subtle than just on or off. It's a bit more or a bit less. But what are the effects of this? Where can we actually see epigenetics? One example I think is particularly interesting is pregnancy. If a fetus doesn't get um, enough food during the first three months, but then does for the next six months, they will come out at an average size be perfectly healthy. However, as they develop into an adult, their body is more likely to try to store energy as fat, they're more likely to become overweight or obese, and this effect can be passed on to the next generation. Despite the fact, you know, once the once the child is conceived, its DNA is fixed, there is, there, there can be no change. Another example is vernalization, which is the phenomenon where a plant will not start growing until it's been exposed to cold for long enough. This is a feature that evolved in response to winter. You start growing in winter, you are going to have a bad time. So, what happens in these plants is that the, uh, the epigenome, you know, as a method, it, it limits all of the growth hormones. So the longer and colder it is, as long as it can survive, the quicker it will start growing straight after. And that's a process that's regulated by epigenetics. And really, those are the basics. Beyond that, it gets rather complicated, and I have a book I can recommend you. But the summary is this. DNA is not enough to explain everything about life. Epigenetics are needed. These sets of controls which attach to and modify DNA and how it acts explain how we have different kinds of cells while all of them containing the same basic script. It explains how we can have permanent responses to things that happened long ago, such as the conditions in which we developed as children. Uh, it explains plant behavior. And also, epigenetics is increasingly being looked at as an area that could be affecting diseases and things as varied as arthritis or cancer. In fact, there are already two kinds of cancer treatment which work by affecting the epigenetic controls on DNA. So, it's definitely a big and fundamental area of research that is going on now. I first got interested in epigenetics in 2014 at the British Science Festival, which was hosted that year at the University of Birmingham. I went along and happened to see a great talk on epigenetics by Nessa Carey, who wrote the very first popular science book on epigenetics. Uh, if you ever get the chance to see her as a speaker, go! She's really clear, very understandable, and honestly, she's quite funny. Uh, and it's also just a very important topic. If anyone's interested in reading into it, I can't recommend the book enough. Uh, attending that talk and reading a bit further around it is actually what led me to doing my internship, which was the only internship I did on my entire physics undergraduate, one in computational and systems biology. But, oh well, you can't, you can't do the same thing all the time. Next, an enzyme named DNA polymerase 3 works down the leading strand and up the lagging strand of the replication fork.
synthesizing two new strands of DNA 